The human desire to fulfill some special existential purpose has existed throughout history. There's a scene in Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland's sci-fi cartoon Rick and Morty that addresses this desire with what I'd call an uplifting cynicism. In it, Summer finds out that she was an unwanted pregnancy. She breaks down and wonders if there's any real meaning to her life. Morty then tells her his equally unsettling experience of burying his own body from a different reality. He concludes by saying, Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Come watch TV. While this may be an especially dark moment, it contains a comforting message. For people like Summer, it's devastating to think we weren't created for some special purpose. To Rick and Morty, life's been that way forever. Why get depressed about existential meaning when life is full of stuff to enjoy, as Morty said, like watching TV together? This struggle with meaninglessness is central to the show. It's due in part to the sheer scale of Rick and Morty's exploits. Not only is there an enormous universe, but that universe has infinite dimensions, and those dimensions have infinite realities. Indeed, it shows us how common, short-lived, and fragile our existence is. But that scale is intended to cause a redirection of meaning. Once you confront the randomness of the universe, the only option is to find importance in the stuff right in front of you. Rick and Morty in particular tells us that friends, family, and doing what we enjoy are far more important than any unsolvable questions about existence. It's a message best explained through the work of philosopher Albert Camus and what he called the capital A absurd. He saw a contradiction between humans' desire to find meaning in life and the meaninglessness of the universe. To Camus, we are Sisyphus, the king from Greek mythology condemned to repeat the same task of pushing a boulder up a mountain only to see it roll down again and again for the rest of his life. But Camus says one must imagine Sisyphus happy. He argues we have to recognize the absurd, meaningless background of our existence and accept it. Once we do, it frees us to find our own subjective meanings and purposes. Rick and Morty shows us where we can find meaning primarily through Rick C-137, who we follow for most of the show. He's aware of the meaninglessness of existence, and it no doubt bothers him. He's the most genius scientist in the multiverse, yet he's an alcoholic. If he can't find a capital T truth about his own existence, what hope does anyone else have? It's clear, however, that science is one of Rick's best avenues for finding a sense of meaning in his daily life. His projects allow him to go on adventures, make himself laugh, and bond with his grandkids. Indeed, science doesn't help find an existential purpose because it doesn't provide agreeable, absolute meanings to life. And Rick knows that. He's better off using it to experience the wonders of space around him with the people he cares about. Now, Rick at times tries to convince us that he doesn't care about his family. His relationships with them aren't perfect, they're far from it. And I think that's a point Harmon and Royland are trying to make. His family relationships are terrible, and Rick's not happy. In fact, he's only happy when he fosters a good relationship with them. It's revealed to Morty, for example, that Rick's off-used catchphrase Wubba Lubba Dub Dub means I am in great pain, please help me. Later in the episode, Rick freezes time, making sure Morty and Summer can clean up a party before their parents get home. But they spend most of their time having fun and watching movies together. When Morty mentions Rick hasn't said Wubba Lubba Dub Dub in a while, he responds, Don't need to. I have a <coughs> new catchphrase. Oh yeah? W what's that, Rick? I love my grandkids. Aww. This is only reiterated by the fact that he freezes time for six months, just him and his grandkids. And that's just one of many examples. Here, Rick can't wait to go to the intergalactic arcade with Morty for the day. In the episode Rick's Team Minutes, he bonds with Morty in front of the TV the entire episode. Then, there's this moment when Rick sacrifices his own life for Morty. Although he ends up surviving the situation, it's clear he found more meaning in his relationship with Morty than any special existential purpose for himself. These moments allow us to see through Rick's hardened shell. He's a man who finds meaning in almost nothing, but is happiest when he's with his family. Most of our lives we filter our actions through the idea 
that we have a special purpose. It's hard to accept that our efforts will be largely pointless and quickly forgotten in our indifferent universe. That search for our big existential purpose often blinds us from the stuff we actually enjoy and keeps us from being with people that truly matter. In this way, Rick provides some serious catharsis for the audience. We see someone who's so disaffected and cynical actually gain enjoyment from being around his friends and family. It's through Rick that the show tells us to embrace life, revel in it, and ultimately not take it too seriously. The answer is don't think about it! In our postmodern age, religion, ideology, science, and even common values don't always provide a meaning for our existence, and it can be extremely isolating. Rick and Morty doesn't suggest that our search for existential meaning won't continue. It only asks if it's a question worth answering when a meaningful life can be found through friends, family, and new experiences. Indeed, the only thing more terrifying than not existing or not knowing why you exist is existing and having no one to share it with. Lay it, lay it down, let me see your hand, show me what you got. You're always talking, but you're not playing. It doesn't match your face. Gotta find my way away from this place. Can you take me? Take it from me, Ice. You can't just float around space not caring about stuff forever.